sometimes if I have to make a call, I'll, I'll take the more aggressive tack. And, and uh, at, at any rate, um, so if you're having problems completing that, let me know, and we can we can uh, talk about it. Um, does anyone have questions over the assignment? There's, there's one thing that almost everyone, when they first show me their database design, gets wrong. And what I like to do is I like to talk about that. Not specific to that, because I'm not going to give you the answer, but talk about that in another context, in the context of the uh, example that we were going over last week. So I like to talk about that for a bit. Then. I like to sort of repeat what we did at the very end of class because it was a little bit rushed, not to mention emergencies flying around and, and so on and so forth. So uh, I like to go over that again um, because minimally that's what you'll need to complete um, your your assignment, and then and then go from there and, and build on it. Yes. Could you talk a little bit more also about the indexes? What, what more do you want to know? Well, um, you said last week we could use it to um, constrain the candidate keys right. so that they have unique values. Correct. And that you can use them for looking up other data. Or, I mean, use it as another way to look up right. data. And that's the part. Like, where if they're not unique, it, and how do you use them to look up Oh, the that, you see, that's the good news. The good news is you don't have to worry about how it's used because the database engine handles that. So, we haven't talked about SQL yet, but um, essentially, there's two ways the database can go about looking for stuff. It can use indexes to find things, or it can do what's called a sequential search. And a sequential search is where it starts at the top of the table, and it goes all the way down until it hits the end of the table. And that's typically what takes the most time, right? Because you're looking at the first, you're looking at the second, you're looking at the third. All right, so where you get speed is um, when, when it's doing index searches as opposed to sequential searches. Now, the question of how to use an index is once you define the index, the database engine uses that uses that index where it can. And it's transparent to you, which is, which is actually a good thing. So, for example, if I had a table, an employee table, and it had an employee ID and a name, let's say the, the employee ID is a primary key, a name is an attribute, and other fields. If I were to do a select statement, this, and, and let's say there's no index on the table. If I were to do select star from employee where name equals Bob Jones. If there was no index defined on name, then that would be like going to the library and trying to find all books that have exactly 300 pages in them, right? There's no, there's no index. If you go to the library, there's no index by number of pages. So if you wanted to find all the books that had 300 pages, you'd have to go and look at the first book, look at the second book, look at the third book until you found them exhaustively. So if there's no index on name, that's what the database engine would have to do. It would have to look at the first person. Is that Bob Jones? No, it isn't. Is that the second person? Is that Bob Jones? Yeah, it is. Is the third person Bob Jones? No. Is the fourth person Bob Jones? No. Is the fifth? Maybe the 1700th. Yeah, it's Bob Jones again. Another Bob Jones. And so on down the line. So with no indexes, the database has to do a sequential search. If, however, I added an index to this, and I execute the same statement, the database engine is smart enough to look and say, how am I going to pull that information out? I'm going to pull that information out. Oh, look, there's an index by name. So I'm going to use that index. 
So the database engine makes a decision itself of what the best way to get out of the data is, and it plans it. So if I were to say, let's say I was, I was interested in all the Bob Joneses that were in Ohio. All right. If there were no indexes at all, it would have to do a sequential search, the database, right? It would have to look at the first row. Is that Ohio Bob Jones? Yes or no? Second row, third row, through all of them. Now, without changing the SQL statement at all, if I were to go and add a name index on that, all right, the next time I executed this query, it would look and it would say, well, there's an index on name, so I'm going to look through all, I can jump right to the Bob Jones section of the library, right? I can jump right to the uh, Bob Jones area in the database and go through all the Bob Jones and see if any of those are in Ohio, all right? So uh, lastly, if I change it so that there was an index on Ohio and not name, all right, it would go through the list of all the people in Ohio and see if it matched Bob Jones. If I put an index on both of them, the database would have to decide which is the better index to go about. All right. Let's say, for example, you want to look up a book in the library. And again, I keep coming back to, to that example because I think that that's a very relevant example. For If I knew the subject of a book and the title of the book, I'm probably better off looking it up by the title, right? There is, um, you know, there's a lot of books um, about, I can't think of any book right now. There's a lot of books about physics, right? but there's only a handful of books called A Brief History of Time. All right? So it would be better to use the title index because there's likely less entries in that. And the database would be capable of making those sort of decisions. This is called, the, the technical word, uh, word for this is program data independence. In other words, you as a programmer don't have to worry about some of the internal details of how it's going to do it. If the database structure is defined, the database will decide how to go about looking for things. If, if you have sort of a bottleneck in your system, if you notice an application is running slower than you would like it to, what you can actually do from some database engines is get a plan for the query. In other words, a plan for the query will tell you how the database plans on pulling that information. So it might tell you that, hey, you know, let's say me as a programmer, I don't know anything about how that, is, how that database is set up. And I run this through the plan. It might tell me it's going to use the name index and then sequentially search for the state. Or if there's a state index, it will use the state index and sequentially search for the name. Or if there's both, whichever one makes the most sense. Like if there's, you know, it'll make a decision on that. And what you can do is you can see where the bottlenecks are. Anywhere where there's sequential searches, there's, there's going to be a bottleneck. All right? Um, because, or there's a potential for a bottleneck if there's enough data. Because then it has to go from the beginning through the end. So the short answer after, you know, the short answer after, you know, 20 minutes of discussion is that you don't have to worry about that. The database engine takes care of that. You sort of anticipate what are the logical things that people are going to want to look up for. So, for example, if I was making a stu an application to maintain a student database, all right, well, we know that the student number is primary key, right? So I'd have a look up by student number. That's like a no-brainer. i think of what are some of the other things I would want to look up by. Well, I'd probably want to look up by name. All right. Uh, maybe look up by phone number. All right. I'd pick a handful of things and create indexes on them. All right. Then the database engine would decide, hey, if you do a query by this, this is the index to use. So all that's sort of transparent to you as a developer. All right. You take your best guess about what are ways that you're going to be planning on looking it up. 
and create the indexes and then let the database engine do its thing. If you find, for example, again, I can't really think of a good one for students, social security number, maybe. I don't know. I know that's a, that's a touchy one because of privacy issues and all that. But if you didn't anticipate that you would want to look up students by social security number, let's say, and you wrote a query and it took long, all right, to pull up a student using their social security number, then you could always all go back in and add an index for it. And once the database had indexed that field, then um, the query should go a lot quicker for that. So that, that's sort of the answer. You really don't have to worry about that. But as a designer, you, you decide a, which ones are going to be indexed based on what you think. A, a, as a designer, what you do, you know, what you do, and, and, and thinking back to the, the projects I worked on with this, you, you, yeah, you, you take your best guess of like, what are the ways people are probably going to want to get at this data? What's a reasonable way? You know, if we have orders, you know, Let's say we have an order table. It's reasonable, yeah, that we're going to look, want to look up orders by customer. It's reasonable that we might want to look them up by sales rep. It's reasonable we might want to look them up by a date range. It's reasonable that we might want to look them up by a particular product. So maybe we would take a shot at those. Then, when we run our application, if something is unacceptable, you know, if some sort of time is unacceptable that, that a process we would want to happen a lot quicker than it is, we would then go into what's called database tuning, where we'd look at and would see maybe there's an index that if we add it would, would make things go a lot quicker. So we, we would then, we would then you know, try to systematically look at the process, run some plans to see, gee, this query, how is the database trying to get at the data? If we added indexes, would that help it or, or so on? So that, that's the process of database tuning. There's, there's several steps that you can go to, but you can get a plan for uh, a SQL statement. They'll tell you uh, the, the, the manner in which it's uh, getting it. Let me, let me try to pull. I don't have an example handy, but let's see if I have an example of sure what specific data oh they're using they're using uh, SQLite read of the table. It's looking at the first row, the second row, the third row, the fourth row, and seeing which one of them meet that criteria. All right? And the estimate is it's going to be approximately 100,000 rows. So that'll take a while. Now, notice what they did here. They added an index on that table. All right? For A. All right? Now they do the explain query, and it says it's going to search table using 
the index. So we didn't change anything about our query. It's the exact same query. So if that was in a program, this is like from a command line, but if you can imagine if it was embedded in a program, it would work a similar way. We haven't changed anything on that, um, yet we've gone from uh, searching approximately 100,000 rows to searching approximately 10 rows. That's his best guess of how many uh, values would, would match that criteria. Now, if we add a second index, all right, I guess that doesn't really add anything to it. It's using a, a, an index that matches a combination of things. And that really doesn't add anything to it. That would be like, well, what, what they would be doing would be like comparing a index uh, in the library for the title of the book with uh, an index that showed the title and the number of pages. Well, the, the index by title is really what gives you the benefit. If you add number of pages and index a combination of those two fields, that really doesn't give you any, any additional benefit. And that's reflected by the fact that it's using the other, it's using the other index, but it's still saying it's going to look up approximately 10 rows. So you don't get really any, any bang for that. So the, the exact way that you run a plan varies from database to database. But almost what, what you're looking for when you, when you run that is where it is using indexes and where it's using sequential reads. If it's using indexes, is it using an appropriate index? Or is it using an index that isn't going to help that much? You know, let's say, you know, we had some query of students here at Lorain County Community College. And um, we ran the plan and it said that the query was going to use the state, for example. Well, given that most people here go to, you know, are from Ohio, using a state index isn't going to be particularly beneficial. So, you know, possibly if we added an index, then, then maybe we would be able to get a more efficient query. All right. Good questions. That's really the good news, though, is that as a, as a, as a developer developing the code, you don't really need to do anything to use the index. You, uh, your job as a developer is to do your best in defining what you think those indexes are going to be. Um, and um, then being in a position to troubleshoot something if the performance of it isn't good. All right. What website is this? SQLite.org. And the exact page is eqp.html. SQL is a database that is used on a lot of uh, mobile devices and the Android class we used. Oh, here's one to read if you're really having trouble sleeping. Lazy versus eager query plans for tuple independent. Paramount challenge in probabilistic databases is scalable computation of confidence of, tu of tuples in a query result. This paper introduces an efficient secondary storage operator for exact computation of queries on a tuple independent probabilistic database. Wow. When you see words like tuples, <laughs> Tuple is, I believe, a database attribute. Let's look it up. Oh, a tuple is an ordered list of elements. So that would actually be a database row. Or something like that. I don't know. See, that's the problem. I, uh, unlike the people who wrote that paper, I don't have a PhD, so um, I, I put things in, in manners that, that I hope are understandable. All right. 
Um, so what our strategy is going to be is, what, what is it going to be? Oh, I want to talk about, again, not directly, but I want to talk indirectly about a couple of questions I've gotten on the database. Because I've had a couple of people show me the database and ask me, you know, um, what's up, you know, is their database okay? And I'm seeing a fairly consistent issue. So I want to spend some time talking about that issue. But again, I'm not, it's no spoiler. I'm not going to give you the answer for this. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about um, the issue and, and, and understand why we do it a certain way, this way. So in this case, what I'm going to do is pull up the human resources database we had from last time. And I'm going to ask a question. All right. And the question is, is, if we look here in the database, we have an employee table and a department table. All right? And there's a foreign key relationship between department and employee. Now the question is, all right, why did I do it that way as opposed to simply having the department name as an attribute in the employee table? Let me put up on the board two alternative ways to solve this. Because when I teach a 143 quest, uh, class, I get this question all the time. And I can, you know, I, I can anticipate you have many of you having the same question. So here's the question. Here's two different ways I can define that employee table, uh, or, or define this data. Employee has a key of employee ID, has a name, and I'll keep it simple and say it has a department ID. That's what we did. And then we made a department table that has a department ID and a department name. There's a foreign key between these. That's the way we did it. The other way that we could do it is this. Employee ID, the primary key. Name and the department name. You know, there's, there's a, what a lot of students they say and, and their sentiments are, are, are good, but, but their conclusion in this case isn't correct. So, hey, that's a simpler approach. Simpler is usually better, right? Um, so <clears throat> why did I choose to do it this way and not do it this way? Or put differently, what's wrong with this way? I don't know if that's a serious answer. I don't know if that's a serious answer or if you're just uh, following my advice and you're definitely in the right direction. Yeah, go ahead. There could be an, one employee who's in two departments. Well, well, neither database design supports that. So that, that's a wash. This is assuming that a, a employee has to be defined as part of one department. Yes? If you have other information, Okay, that's one excellent point. What if there's other information about the department? For example, maybe there is a name of the, de uh, 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 the, the location of the department headquarters, you know, the office that, that it's in. You know, here at LC, the business division office is BU 211. So where would you put that? All right, so that would be a problem. In here, in this example, that's an easy answer. In this case, well, you know, we got one table, we, we don't really have much of a choice where to put it, right? We'd have to put it here. All right? What's wrong if we do that? What's wrong if we put the office 
of the department in the employee table. The employee might have their own office distinct from no, the department. No, 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 no. Well, then we could have an employee office. It's not normal. Well, it's not normal. It's, 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 not, it's not normalized, okay? It's not normalized. What do you mean by not normalized? What's the consequence of it not being normalized? Redundant data. Redundant data. In other words, let's imagine if we have two people in the, in the business division, me and Huffman, all right? Employee ID one is Zellers. The, my office is BU211J. My department is the business division, and the department's office is BU211. Employee two, Huffman. His so office is BU211, I don't know the letter, B let's say. His department is business. And for him, the business division's office is BU109. All right, clearly that's a problem. The business division's office can't be in 211 and 109, right? So the problem with if there's additional information about the department, there's no place to put it here. So we'd have to put it in the employee. And what's wrong with that is, because it's information about the department, it shouldn't vary from employee to employee, right? If you're in the business division, the office of your department is BU211, all right? Not BU109. So let's say, for example, they build, they decide to build a building all right, in my honor, all right, and they decide to move the business building over there, business division over there. So now the business division's headquarters are in the ZE building in room one, all right. So we go in and we go and update this, ZE1. If we forget to update someone, even if this was right to start, we forget to update someone, someone we have inconsistencies. If you look at Huffman's information, the business division's office is BU211. If you look at Zeller's information, the business division's office is ZE1. So we don't have that problem if we take this approach, right? Because all we're storing is the pointer to the division. So employee number one, Zeller's, is in department one. Employee number two, Huffman, is also in department one. That department one is the business division and its office is BU211. So, after they build and have the groundbreaking for the ceremony and a very festive uh, party and, and reception and they move the business division to ZE1, you make the change there, and nothing about that changes. You don't have to change it in Zellers and Huffman and Norad and so on. You just make the change in the business division. So, that's one good reason why this approach is better than that approach. Because really, a department is a separate entity, right? And as a separate entity, there may be more information about it than simply the name of it. And one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to store, and this gets to the normalization, which we'll talk about this going forward. One thing that you don't want to do is have two entities disguised as one entity. In this case, we have information about the employee and information about the department in one, in one table, in one entity. And that's not correct, all right? That's a violation of the rules of normalization, blah, blah, blah. But in a nutshell, since I don't have a PhD, it is two entities trying to pass itself off as one entity. All right? And whenever you have that, you run the risk of inconsistency because you have duplicate data stored um, across 